Freenas 11.3 Release Candidate 1. I have this loaded on my system, and this is uh, specifically the server I mostly use for managing all of my videos and a few miscellaneous things. Uh, I actually do all my editing directly on this. It's connected at 10 gig, and I wanted to give it a try with the release candidate version. And generally, once they get to the release candidate, there's a reasonable amount of stability, and I don't mind contributing back to the community and saying, hey, I found this, that, or the other that wasn't working properly. Now, the first thing you'll notice about the 11.3 series is the updated dashboard. They have really polished this up a lot. I like this part because this is always like a question people have about, well, how much memory is being used for cache versus that? Because people will say, oh, I see a lot of memory usage. Well, yeah, you might, but that's the idea of the way ZFS works. It does not require 28.6 gigs in cache, but because I have 32 gigs and I'm not using that 32 gigs for anything else, why not turn it into a read cache? It's uh, the way ZFS works. So it's not that necessarily it's memory hungry. It just doesn't like wasting when you have 32 gigs of memory sitting here. Now, this particular machine, just for those who always want to know, it is an Intel Xeon E5-2620, uh, 24 threads available, 12 cores uh, with 32 gigs, like I said here. And the pool, let's look at the pool size here. We'll uh, jump down to that. Well, actually, jump down a second because you notice it does have four network cards in it, but those network cards um, aren't in use except for the two 10 gig cards are in use. Uh, CXB, CXGB0 and CXGB1, it's one of the uh, dual cards and it is both connected at 10 gig uh, in two separate networks. There's no VLANs in this. So just an FYI on that. Storage wise, look at the pools here. And you can see the data set, how much is used, how much uh, healthy 2.23 and uh, about 10 terabytes or yeah, just under 10 terabytes free right now. And some of the things uh, I've done for testing inside of here. And so it also has the uh, Unify video and some other things I've been testing on and dumping data back and forth. So like I said, actually using it, it also serves as a share for uh, some of the lab servers that I set up. Now, problems I've had with it. Not too much so far. The only real one was when I set up the replication tasks, they were set up under 11.2. They didn't carry over, but they have a really simple way to fix that problem. So if we go over here and we look at replication tasks, um, a backup is not a rate of drives. A backup is when you copy all your data to somewhere else. I bring that up because I've had people uh, where's catastrophic failures of RAID arrays to avoid that because all of my videos are on here. This does synchronize to my other server. And out of the box, it did seem to be working. It gives you a finished, but let me show you the actual result of that when I scroll down here. The replication run would fail, even though it would say finished here in green. So it finished and failed and it gave some logs and it's running in legacy mode. So let me just show you what that means. And I'm going to dive a little deeper into this in a second video. Um, well, once the 11.3 is finalized, they updated and enhanced a lot the replication task to make it a little bit simpler. And we'll get into that, like I said, in a later video, but it does have the ability to import and it's supposed to work with the legacy mode. It failed. Minor problem. I just re-ran it with this. You can actually just follow the settings. It supports uh, direct push, transport SSH. By the way, this is why I have to make another video on this is because now they have SSH netcat, local and legacy because now you can actually do uh, replications across different pools that you have in the system. So they've added a lot of features and I'm going to wait till it's in full release or uh, I should say interface stable, which means, okay, we've added as much as we're going to add to this uh, for the moment so I can do a video on there. But it isn't nice that they enhanced all that, uh, but you just kind of rerun the wizard. It doesn't even have to go through the whole setup of the other system and it seems to be working, but I'm going to do some more fine tuning and testing, but overall they seem to have simplified the way it works in some ways, but added more options. So uh, the legacy didn't quite carry over. Jails, no problems there. Matter of fact, this is where I'm going to say there's a highlight in the new system is the way they did the jails and the plugins. So let's roll over here and look at their release documentation, which I was saying here, this is their docs. They're starting for the 11.3 RC1 user guide and talking about all the enhancements, new features, uh, new peers, credentials for API, new transport for netcat for improved transfer. Like I said, this is all some of this replication, which is awesome. Um, configure snapshot retention on a remote site, configure replication 
replication record makes it easy to replicate scenarios, including local replication, which before there was a trick you could do by pointing replication at yourself and then replicate to other pools. Now you don't have to do that. It's a regular feature. The network management interface, we'll dive deeper into that, but you've seen how the dashboard's nicer, updated alert, much better reporting. Now the plugins has been streamlined a lot and actually we're gonna jump next. Um, I talked about before the iSCSI wizard when they first came out with the beta one on there. So now it's kind of like, yeah, some fill in the blanks to get things set up. And uh, before we go further though, I wanna dive into the deprecated and removed features. This has been a thing that some people are upset about. Domain controller has been removed from services and net data has been removed from services as well. Now, this is not a flaw in net data overall. My understanding is from going through and reading some GitHub comments, this is a flaw in net data and the way it handles things in BSD is it has a memory leak. So they've removed net data from the BSD system because you may have heard me talk about net data before or the fact that net data is now in XCPNG and people asking, well, is there a memory leak? Well, no, it's some type of BSD problem they were having. Um, so I don't know if that's coming back or not. Uh, obviously, you, you don't generally reboot or uh, leave these things uh, on any type of cycle. You have them running you know, potentially for a very long time. So a memory leak would well be very detrimental to the system because it would slowly eat away at it. So I understand their need to remove it. The domain controller, I never had set this up because I never bothered trying to use third-party domain controllers for Windows. I talked about this on one of my, oh, I think my last vlog Thursday. I generally, if I'm going to do a domain controller, I'm going to lean towards setting it up for uh, Windows domain controller. So I know it's 100% compatible, but you had the ability to do that with here on FreeNAS and now they have removed that. Now you can still Join this. This is different. This is what I want to be clear about. You can still join FreeNAS to an Active Directory domain run by Windows. It just doesn't have the option of being the head end of a domain. So that has been an important little uh, thing on there. And the built-in Docker template has been removed from virtual machines. Instructions on understanding Docker manually over here. I don't know anyone running Docker inside of this. And I know I have tested several times and I'm sorry, I love you FreeNAS, but I, I just don't feel your whole virtual machine stack. Uh, the Beehive system is very mature. I've always found it to be a little bit buggy. Um, so there's that. So I, I don't, I don't even dove deep into it because, well, I just found it kind of a pain to do that, so I don't really use your hypervisor much. So I'm not gonna miss that configuration, but maybe someone is. I'm sure it was in there for a little while, but not enough for people to really keep it in there and there's a manual method. Now, back over here, plugins. I like the way they did this. So here is browse and, and collection of IAC systems uh, supported plugins versus community plugins. And not only have they changed the way this looks, they've added some new ones. So in the community plugin section, we got OpenVPN server, Mad Sonic, Sick Chill, and this one for people that know and are fans of my channel, Unify Controller in here. Have not tested future video. Uh, I will do some installing and testing and see how it works. But I did notice it is the latest version, 5.1235, and they have the long-term support version uh, 5.640 underscore two um, in here as well. So I may do some playing with that. I was really hoping and maybe someone watching this will uh, do this or is it work instruction how to manually set this up. But I would love to see, I know it's not the, it's not in support anymore, but hey, if someone could port over the Unify video server uh, software to this, that wouldn't be bad because, uh, hey, why not? I got a few cameras and I could always move that working in here. Uh, but that's it, a WeChat and a few other things. And like I said, kind of cool. Uh, and the fact that IX system is like, hey, these are the ones they support. I, the one thing I will say, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I guess we could select columns differently, but I don't like the slide back and forth, but hey, whatever. Uh, it just feels like it would be clunky to use if there's a lot of things on there and it feels unnatural to slide left to right. But uh, maybe maybe that's just me. I don't know that I would file a complaint on that yet. I'm not that picky of a person. I did already have sync thing in here and I went ahead and updated the plugin to see if it would migrate. It, did, it seemed to work fine and sync thing did open up. I don't have any shares in it at the moment, uh, but it did go through the setup process and get that rolling. So um, there's going to be some future videos I do on FreeNAS and Sync things. There's a little bit of changes they made when you set that up, but eh, at least they added it in there. I would also like to see, and I know this was requested before, um, with NextCloud, which is still in here and it's supported by X Systems, they uh, set up so the out-of-the-box setup had HTTPS options. But, you know, hopefully we'll get there.
Now I'll run down a list real quick here. Uh, FreeBSD operating system, uh, some updates there. Angular has been updated. Some of the back end and the way the UI works has uh, been updated. UI changes, et cetera. So a lot of little stuff. Now, one thing interesting, though, is that they went and added the Acme system in here for reporting. So it does have that as an added feature, the automatic certificate management uh, environment. Uh, and it does support the Acme DNS screen and Route 53. There, DNS challenge versus uh, open web challenge is another way you can do uh, Let's Encrypt certificates that work over Acme, but uh, not all the backend providers yet are supporting it. We're still hoping, and I have friends literally working on that project with other uh, companies to get more support out there for DNS challenge. And the difference between a DNS challenge and doing Acme versus a web challenge is you don't have to have any ports or any ports open for DNS. You can just do the DNS query back and forth to claim ownership, and it can pass a certificate that you can then use um, and then configure it yourself without having to actually expose the system. So uh, as that gets more mature and more developed, I may jump into to do a video on that. Let's go over here to reporting. They made this look a lot nicer. Uh, so that's definitely, although we remove net data and we all love the way net data looks, I know a lot of people, myself included, do like that. Uh, they did re update the reporting to look a little bit nicer inside of here so we can look at the different uh, devices, memory, network information. And it's looking better. I don't think this is much than when I looked at the beta uh, maybe a month ago before. But hey, cool, they're still progressing on that. When, let's jump over here to networking, over to interfaces. They made this look a little bit better too. So when you're adding network interfaces, they did streamline it so you can see these physical, physical, up, up, down. Um, and if we add something, we can actually say a bridge, a link aggregation, or a VLAN, and then start configuring it, and then choose how you want it to attach to the parent interface. And you kind of get the idea. I do like how they streamlined it as before it was a little bit confusing to explain to someone. I only knew it because I've been using FreeNAS for a long time, but yeah, their networking interface was kind of in more than one place. Now that they've streamlined it with a series of pull downs when you're complying network config, I think this is going to help uh, new users quite a bit when they're setting things up. Now, something else of note is just how they've changed some of the things in the UI that I actually think is pretty cool. So before we tried to squeeze it all in one column and that always caused a problem. Now we have these little drop downs and then we can do this. So you could just drop down each one and then go into each subsection like this. So that to me is a little bit nicer. Uh, actually, where's the close on this? I guess we could type exit. Okay, cool. That brings us back to here. I didn't see a little X at the top, uh, but being able to have these little expand down, this one still has, looks like the traditional one, but I'm assuming they're gonna do more of them with that little expand out. So like when we're looking at storage, we look at pools, they still have this, but in some places, instead of having to clutter up the menus like this, you can do these little drop downs. Now, another thing that's also gonna need a whole new video is, let me see if any of these are set up for this, I probably don't, maybe the Unify Video VM, what we, uh, have here is a new way they're dealing with uh, permissions and ACLs. So at ACL, there you go. I talked about this in the last beta. Um, this is one of those things that's going to be, it looks a little more complicated, but what they're giving you is a much finer, more granular control of the way you do access, access control lists and permissions. Uh, so that's definitely something welcome and looking forward to uh, as they get all, the, all that set up. Um, I wouldn't mind having a better, I guess you could say, interface here for the way this works because when you're here on this this is just big uh and, and showing me a picture of a network i think it looks cool but it it means i had to scroll all the way down to see that these are up and connected but then again maybe not everyone's like me and has that many network interfaces on their free nas and that might be nitpicking because well I don't actually log into my free NAS very often. And once it's up and running, I mostly am a user of it. This video is streaming and recording to it will be edited against it. And from a day-to-day -day basis, I pretty much just set it and forget it and don't log in um, and just have it send me alerts and notices. On a, on a subject of alerts and notices, that is somewhere else that there's a lot more going on with their alert services and alert settings. So you get more control over this of how that's going to work. So that's going to be um, more fine tuning because I there's a lot in here right now. I have it mostly to send me email notifications if there's anything going on, but it does have at the top here when you log in. I do kind of like this, so you can look at like I was pushing updates for the plugins. So you're kind of getting a history of things. GL update that I did. Here's that replication run running uh, versus that. Let's show you what else happens when we run a replication task. So if we run it, 
Let me go over here, which has this little expand up menu. We'll hit run now, continue. And uh, it already happened that, well, did it happen or did it queue? There we go. Already finished. Yeah, finished really fast because there's no new data to replicate. Uh, so when it did the replication, it's there. We get an alert and you get this replication run and you can view the log of the replication run, download the log. I like the way they put that little menu at the top. You kind of get a history of what the system's got going on. Uh, that's definitely nice. And it has a filter at the top so you can find things up there. So if I typed in jail or replication, I can go through a history of it. So the little UI changes like that are nice, especially when a lot of times, you know, you got to troubleshoot or things like that. But overall, I really like it. I'm going to keep plugging away with the new update. I uh, haven't run into any major issues with it. So far, the functionality seems to be there. I still got to do some more thorough NFS and iSCSI testing over time to see if it works. But uh, this only runs my lab servers, nothing production. So I'm not as, I'm not worried about if it crashes. I mean, I'm I'll do a bug report, but it's not going to be detrimental to my business is what I should say. Other than if it does um, make a mess of the files, it would be detrimental to my uh, production of YouTube videos. But that's why we replicate it to a completely stable version of FreeNAS. So I have a complete backup of everything because, well, practice what you preach. I say back everything up. You should really back everything up. Make sure you back that NAS up. Uh, and by the way, for those of you wanting that shirt, yes, it's online. There's links below for those of you wondering where the shirts come from. You can find them on Teespring uh, that you see us wearing. We have a handful of them on there. And also, if you, there's other ones you think we should add to the list or to the store, if you have some idea, uh, drop a link over to forums and continue discussion there. Uh, we're always open to suggestions because we're not shirt designers. We're techie people who just think that's funny. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.